Hello there. Most people think this is barking mad, but it's coming to your local area whether you like it or not. The establishment will do everything it can and use every excuse under the sun to shut your life down and stop you using energy in any form. The trouble for them is that they are now facing a bit of a backlash from a public that is growing increasingly weary of their tricks. With plots that voters never asked for, from 15-minute cities to low-traffic neighbourhoods to ultra-low emission zones, they've been working tirelessly to make independent vehicle travel as difficult as possible for the proletariat. But there is another weapon in the establishment's armoury one they've been quietly using with great success. The 20 mile per hour zones. And these are proliferating to the extent that Wales is to implement a blanket 20 mile per hour speed limit on Sunday the 17th of September. This will transition just about all 30 MPH areas into 20 MPH zones. 20 miles per hour will become the new default speed limit in Wales. And the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says that this does not make sense, except in certain areas like near schools. But the scheme will still go ahead, won't it? But it doesn't stop there. The Welsh Government intends to use the services of their firefighters to help the police pull over those naughty drivers who break the new speed limit in order to lecture and educate the errant drivers, as long as the speeding wasn't excessive. If excessive, the police will immediately step in. The idea, it seems, is that firefighters who've had to attend vehicle pile-ups could be well placed to show speeding drivers the errors of their ways. Now the interesting bit here is that it's local politics in the driving seat. And there are no end of campaigners willing to hound their local councils into implementing 20 MPH or even car-less zones. The WEF, the UN and the UK establishment don't need to lift a finger. They can just say, it's the will of the people. All those at the top need to do is facilitate the money getting into the local council's coffers to pay for implementing what they will be claiming is a local initiative. Now a lot of people would balk at a new blanket UK-wide 20 mph speed limit. Except in their own little local area, of course, where their children cross their local roads. But outside their own area, it's different. They want to get a bit of a move on. So parents worried about their own children in each area will push for a new 20 MPH zone where they live. And all it takes is a bit of pushing by the National Nudge Unit and councils will be putting up 20 MPH speed limits everywhere. It will be a locally driven, pun intended, initiative that will enforce a new national 20 mph speed limit. And with people like former Top Gear presenter James May fully on board with this, together with what's going on in Wales, then it's obvious it's already started. Then up will go all the 20 mph speed cameras in preparation for the paper mile system of fleecing the driver yet again. Electric vehicle or not. And the government's newly updated Manual for Streets, published earlier this year, says things like the aim should be designing to keep vehicle speeds at or below 20 mph on residential streets unless there are overriding reasons for accepting higher speeds. And where on-street parking is provided, parked cars can introduce a road safety problem, particularly if traffic speeds are above 20 mph and there are few places for pedestrians to cross with adequate visibility. And... Keeping traffic speeds at 20 mph or less in all streets on a development. 
and there is much talk about pedestrian desire lines, which are the routes they wish to take. These will be maintained, so making drivers go much more slowly and probably making driving very, very onerous. Designers should seek to control vehicle speeds to below 20 mph in residential areas so that pedestrian activity is not displaced, it says. And this will be nationwide in the end. Now, as far as I can see, these are recommendations. But you can see where this is going. But it's not just car drivers. They're coming for the cyclists too. Cycle lanes would need to be regulated as well. The design speed for a cycle track would normally be 20 mph, but reduced as necessary to as low as 6 mph for short distances where cyclists would expect to slow down. All the way through the document is the aim of reducing speed in all residential areas to a maximum of 20 mph. And then there's those traffic calming road features like speed bumps, which actually pump the blood pressure up and test the suspension, even at moderate speeds, especially if the speed bumps are not maintained properly. According to the Manual for Streets recommendations, evidence from traffic calming schemes suggests that speed controlling features are required at intervals of no more than 70 metres in order to achieve speeds of 20 miles per hour or less. Straight and uninterrupted links should therefore be limited to around 70 metres to help ensure that the arrangement has a natural traffic calming effect. So when driving or cycling in future, you'll be faced with either going over something or going around something every 70 metres or so. Now think about people who need to use the roads to make a living. Plumbers, electricians, delivery drivers, etc, etc, etc. And how about the police, fire and ambulance services and the refuse collectors? Now those providing public services will have a say in local planning proposals. But I fear the average driver will definitely be left out in the cold. Now this document also says... The intention is to create streets that encourage greater social interaction and enjoyment while still performing successfully as conduits for movement. Sounds more like complete traffic strangulation to me. It will be difficult getting around these new areas in a personal car, which must therefore be the aim. Much of London is now run along these lines, making getting in and out by car far more difficult than the surrounding areas. But once every built-up area is the same, it will be a different story, and personal transport will more and more go the way of the horse and cart. Because people without access to their own freedom-giving car are so much more controllable.